Hey there, ghosts and ghouls. Guess what? It's September. That means the final countdown to Halloween, our favorite time of year here at the uh, at the cave, at the Maker's Cave. Now, what we have here is a animated chainsaw from Home Depot, and the only thing it really does is you push the trigger, it makes a, a motor sound, and the chainsaw goes around. That's not good enough for us. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add external power supply to it. No need for batteries. We're going to add a motion sensor. And on the back, we got a little knob here that's going to allow us to make this thing either run continuous or at a set interval, like every 15 seconds, every 10 seconds, every, every 5 seconds. Or all the way up is it's going to work on the motion detector. So stay tuned. We're going to show you exactly how we modified and hacked this. I love Halloween and who shouldn't I belong to a Facebook page uh, dedicated to people who do their own props and and really go all out for Halloween and someone posted that they saw this chainsaw actually I think it might have been this one I hit the trigger and he wanted to know if any knew, anybody knew a hack to make this run continuously. Well, I looked it up. This one came from Big Lots. It was like, I think, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. Um, but I also found one at Home Depot. They're both similar in sound. They both do the same thing, except this one's kind of small. Um, it doesn't really look like a chainsaw you would be running from in the woods with somebody wearing somebody else's face. So I went to Home Depot and they had this one and it's pretty static. You just push the button much like the other one and the motor runs, the chainsaw goes around. But this guy wanted, you know, like I said, um, there was this gentleman, this guy, uh, this gentleman wanted to know if anybody had done a hack to make this thing run continuously. And I said, I can do that. I, that should be fairly simple. And I said, while you're at it, have we ever thought about motion control? Because he said he wanted it running continuously for a prop. I wouldn't recommend that. The motor in here is not that beefy. It's just a toy. Running it continuously would probably eventually burn out the motor. But I figured, you know, heck, a, a motion sensor would probably work real well. And I said, while you're at it, why don't we add a uh, potentiometer over here, a little control knob like volume on your radio. And what that can do is it's got, the, as we'll explain also, you know, all the way down, yeah, here we go. I'm looking off camera to see, make sure you're in frame. All the way down is this thing's going to run all the time. Um, all the way up, all the way clockwise, this thing's going to run off of a motion detector. And in between, from, from uh, 5 seconds to 30 seconds is how we have it built. Uh, you can pick those seconds. So if you pick 10 seconds, you know, you run the knob roughly to, we'll say to the middle would be 15 seconds. So this is going to cycle through and run for its seven, it, it cycles for seven seconds with the motor and the chain going. So it's gonna cycle through that, then it's gonna wait 15 seconds and it'll cycle again. That's a little bit better than continuous. So what we're gonna do in the next scenes is we're gonna tear this apart, we're gonna look and see what makes it tick, and I most likely am gonna use an Arduino board to, to get everything to run just right for the motion sensors and, and the uh, other switches, the potentiometer, and, and, and like I said, and the motion sensor. So. Stay with us, that's what we're going to do next is we're going to tear this apart. Here's the unit. First thing we need to do is we just need to get this out and separate it to see what it looks like on the inside. Uh, I'm going to take, I think I'll start with the battery compartment. Take that lid off. And I already took the batteries out earlier. This is my ride to the, the cave here. This thing was going off because <laughs> it was banging against something. So it sounded like I was traveling with Leatherface all the way to the cave. So it takes four batteries, which is roughly six volts, but a AA battery really doesn't put out one and a half. It only puts out like 1.2. So you've got 1.2, you've got 4.8, 
there we go uh, yeah 4.8 which is about 5 volts which is perfect because that's the power supply that I ordered in was a 5 5 volt uh, 2 amp supply into here so the first thing we're going to do is I notice there's this handle right here and it is held on by this little bolt actually it's not even it's like a cotter pin type thing so well there we go that came out pretty easy and yes the handle comes right out and what we'll do put the pin right back in here so we don't lose it uh, now it looks like there are three screws up here and two down here there's some screws in the handle here I don't know if they need to come out so we'll start with these main five right here right now oh and before we do that very important best money I ever spent and anybody who tinkers should have these these are little tiny makeup containers you know you can make your own makeup you can put them there little screw lids but what they're great for is putting in tiny little parts so you don't lose them and you'll see what I mean because all these screws are coming out and if this was a complicated build I'd actually label each one of those little bins here but I don't think we're gonna have that much and in theory this should be the last one and it looks like this thing's coming apart already And there's that troubled screw fifth one okay so let's take a look oh, let me turn this around so I can see it a little better all right so this looks like it's the control board here's the motor these are the wires coming from the trigger handle right here and that starts everything and the two white wires here they are the speaker let me see if I can I don't want to stress these wires there we go all right so here's the positive coming from the battery box and the negative that's what we'll feed into now originally I was going to put a jack somewhere on this unit um, that the 5 volt power supply would go into but I think instead I'm going to use a 2.1 millimeter uh, cable jack instead of just a regular plug jack and what we'll do is I'm thinking we will screw a hole right back here not screw a hole but drill a hole for that cable to go through now through experience I know a 5 30 second drill bit will fit this cable very snug That's exactly what we're looking for didn't take much pressure at all put the screws back so run this through should fit and there we go Now originally I was just going to bypass the battery box, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it in line 
So that way, if we ever want to run this thing off of batteries, we can still do that. So I guess the first thing we're going to do is attach these cables into here. And we will do that with some, some soldering. I think I need to expose a few more of the wires. wire strippers take a expose a few more a little bit more of that cable or a little bit more of that wire Now what I did just then was using the wire strippers is I actually separated the protectorant, the sieve away from the wire and there it is right in there. So what we can do is we can actually take the wire. The wires are actually tinned on the end and that's actually gonna impede the wrapping. So what we're gonna do is this. Take that tinning off of both of those. There we go. So now that we have that exposed wire right there, Okay, so there's the positive. The negative could be a little tricky because I don't think my tool is going to fit in there. So I'm trying to figure out how we're going to do that. I think we'll just do it the old fashioned way. So we pulled that away. And that is the negative. So I'll take the negative now. All right, I don't know if you heard that pop or not. But that was the uh, the negative coming off of the solder joint for the battery box. So we'll solder that back on when we solder these two back. All right, now for the soldering. All right, we've got our soldering iron here. Wait for that to heat up. Now we connect that negative back up there that we popped off. 
if it's possible. I'm not too worried because I don't think we'll ever use this with battery power. Yes, that was hot. All right, so that's all connected back up. Uh, I just want to touch up this negative one a little bit. There we go. So we've now successfully spliced in our power, or at least our power connector. If you're wondering what I'm doing off camera, I'm desperately looking for one of my 900 pairs of scissors. Scissors are quickly becoming a disposable item for every project. Some people lose screws. Well, I lose screws. But I am especially adept at losing scissors. Okay, so if you can see right there, here is our power pigtail. That's where the power adapter will go in. Next thing I want to do is I'm trying to make this really simple for activation. I'm not going to mod the board or anything like this. All I'm simply going to do is, like we said before, we're going to take the Adreno and I'm just going to have a trigger this runs for, I, admit, I timed it, seven seconds, and then it shuts off. So for a continuous run, every seven seconds, it just needs to close the switch contact. And I can do that with a, a little 5-volt relay, power it off of the, the Adreno, but it'd be nice if this was actually a sense wire itself, and it was actually sending either a positive or a negative. So what I want to do is I want to expose these. There we go. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the batteries back in this. Now, in theory, I want to do is I'm just just, just to make sure that. We got everything right here. I'm going to short these two out, which is like hitting the button. So we should get this to work. Which it does. All right. So now pull out the multimeter. Five volts. Five point three volts. So that is great. That means I'm not going to have to use a relay to fire this. I can actually use the Adreno, uh, one of the GPIO pins, which outputs five volts. And that, in theory, will make the connection. Now, this is positive. I gotta find out which side is which. Oh, well, I was close. Here. So this is 5 volts. See? You're supposed to write things down. This was the positive, right guys? Yes, this is the positive. All right. So we'll move on to the next thing we need to do. All right, now we wanted this thing to run in two different modes or three different modes. We want it to run by motion sensor, continuous, or an intermittent. So how we're going to do that is we're going to do that with a potentiometer that the Arduino board is going to 
pick up. Oh, forgot the knob. The knob, which goes nice. It's a black knob. Blends in well with the project. Okay, so the potentiometer, think a volume knob on your, in your radio. Now how we're going to do this is all the way down is going to be continuous. And as you move up, just like the wipers on your car, you know, it'll be so many seconds between each activation. All right, so this thing runs for exactly seven seconds and then shuts off. So the adreno board, what that's got an adreno board, I could have trouble pronouncing that word, I admit. Don't hold me to that. Um, every, if it sends a signal every seven seconds, it'll, it'll continuously run this machine. Or, if, it, or you know, if we make it longer than that, every 10 seconds, every 12 seconds, every 13, that's what this little knob's gonna do. It's gonna vary the signal. Now if, this, now, if the knob's turned all the way up, that means it's gonna, the adrenaline board's gonna read that, and it's gonna say, okay, I don't wanna do intermittent, I wanna run off the motion sensor. So that's how it's gonna work. All the way down, continuous, various in between, all the way up, motion sensor. So now we gotta find a little place for this knob. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm really liking putting things on the back here. So we're gonna do that. Now we need to figure out what size You figure out what size hole we need to drill for that. And we'll get out our calipers. It's a little over a quarter of an inch. Let's go back to our drill bits. So what we'll do is we'll use a 17 64th but I want to get this done quick and I'm feeling lucky and again I think I'm going to put this down towards the bottom fit a little snug it can go up one one more go up to a 930 seconds much like wood you can always make the hole bigger you can't make it smaller Perfect, perfect fit. I'll fit right there. So I'll put this in real quick for you guys to see what I was talking about. So there now is the switch that's going to control it. Remember, all the way down, continuous run, intermittent in between, all the way up, motion sensor, put a little knob on there, make it look pretty, and there we go. Take that off. Okay, so so far this project is coming along pretty quick. I know you're probably thinking it's complicated or it's taking long, but it's only taking long as I'm talking to you guys. And that's what kept happening in my truck all the way here to the shack. And apparently it's upsetting the turtles because they're having a fit over there. Okay, so so far We've got the power connected in. We've got a hole for the potentiometer for this. Um, 
I think at this point we're actually ready to experiment with the Adreno to see if we can get this thing to work. If you, I don't think I showed you guys the how we're going to activate this. We're going to make a case for this because there's going to be another wire coming out of here. This is the motion sensor. Uh, it's a real basic, it's a real simple one. And there's basically three connectors. You know, you got a positive five volts, your ground, and there's a sense in the middle. And you, what happens is when motion is detected, it outputs five volts. That's why I was excited to find out that this one side of the switch had five volts. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to we're going to pause here for a second. I'm going to break out all the Adreno, Adreno na uh, Nano. Uh, I I really wish somebody would explain to me how to say that word. I, it's been many years I've been working with him, and I stumble over the word every time. But we'll break out the Adreno Nano. We'll get it hooked up, and we'll see how we can go about you know getting this to work. After doing some testing and looking at this, I thought it would be a good idea if we were able to turn the Arduino board off so it just would run normal. So I'm going to do that is I'm going to add this little toggle switch right here. Now this switch has an LED in it. That's why it's got the three connectors right here. I'm not going to hook up the LED because there's one thing I can't stand in props. It's LEDs that don't need to be there. Like a Grim Reaper uh, prop, you know, it's got the blue LED eyes. Makes no sense. So I don't want the LED to be able to show on here because it makes no sense on why a chainsaw would have an LED. Um, and we'll put that right back here. And what we're going to do to add that in is we're going to use a step drill. It's going to allow me to create the right size hole that I need. So here we go. And there we go. It snaps in, it's right here. Let's see if I can lift this up so you can see it. All right, so now what I'll do is I will take this wire which feeds the Arduino board and I'll snip it here and add this switch in line with it. Get some terminal connectors. All right, so we got a spade connector here. This lead's kind of short. I think I want a longer one. Instead of making up a connector, I am just going to take one of my old jumper cables. For some reason, the sound dropped out of my recording. So I'll just walk you through what I'm doing right now. I'm putting the other lead together. I'm putting the crimp connector on it. And now I'm going to put that on the terminal, the other side of the switch. Making sure it's snug. And then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to put that onto the voltage in pin of the Adreno so it'll power the board. And to show you the power button works, there you go, flip the switch, LED lights, 
do it again. Okay, we've done a lot since we took it apart and looked at it. Um, the first thing I had to do is, this is the sense wire here. This is one of the wires coming from the switch. Now, the Adreno board is a micro microcontroller for those uninitiated who don't know. And it runs on code, which I'll have the code at the end of this so you can see exactly what the, how we programmed it. But usually, I, I was under the impression that you know the Adreno, you know, can send these little pins here can send signals out. One of them can be a high or a low, which is you know high is you know five volts, low is there's no volts. And I was assuming that this board the, that controls the uh, the saw was expecting a high to make it activate. Well, I had to had to do some investigation. Actually, what it is is a constant five volts to the board. Oh, excuse me, a constant five volts to the board tells it not to run, okay? And when you take the five volts away, it will run. So I had to reverse my logic there and, and wrap my head around that. But we've got that taken care of, okay? The first thing I did when I was wiring this up, the first thing is that we need to get power. So I soldered in two wires on the connectors here for the battery box, which is also where we soldered in the uh, external power supply. And I, you saw in a previous clip where I put an inline switch to control the board. So the power goes here to the switch, out of the switch, and to the Adreno. The negative on the battery box goes straight to the Adreno. Uh, the Adreno has uh, two sense wires, one for the potentiometer over here, which controls the mode, which remember what we said, all the way down is continuous running, all the way up we use the motion sensor and in between is how many seconds it'll, it'll continue to cycle. So if we have it, say for instance, we have this potentiometer dead middle, uh, that's about 15 seconds, the most is 30 seconds. So the middle is 15 seconds, so it means this will, this will all run, it'll wait 15 seconds, and then it'll run again. Now when you do fire this board up, some of these pins have uh, fluctuate in their state. I could take care of that, but I figure this wasn't, you know, it's not like it's a big heavy robotics project, it's just uh, a Halloween prop. So when you first turn this on, it may run, it may not, but then it'll settle down and it'll do whatever function you decide for it to do. Uh, on the motion sensor, um, I'm going to make a box for this so it's nice and pretty. I'm gonna use uh, probably 3D print it and I'll do that in some black filament. But I put this about, it's about a, I don't know, about 18, 20 inch lead. So you can place that wherever you want to have it activate it. And of course the external power connector which we showed before is black so that's easily hidden. The switch on the back, let me see if I lift this up and I can show you. Right here, uh, angle this around, there we go. Angle it right here. I used a black switch there and I think I told you before I did not wire in the LED on this so it doesn't show when it's running. Alright, so I think that is everything. So we're going to put this back together and I'm going to show you exactly how it runs. Tuck in all the wires and get this out of the way. Well, that went together awfully easy. We go back here to our little collection. We get our screws. Head two out. So you are learning along with me. I did hook this up. I did some minor testing, but I did not do any testing with this all hooked up. Well, and by all hooked up, I mean with, the, with it all assembled. So this will be, you'll experience this with me. And because of that, I am only putting in a couple screws right now. So if we got to go back in, I don't have to undo five. There we go. So that's back together. So, oh, hey, we want the full effect. 
you can go waving your chainsaw around if you don't have a handle. All right, put that in there. Okay, so I'm going to show you this at a distance late, uh, right after this clip, how it would look if you were putting it somewhere. But right now, we just want to test it for functionality. Functionality, functionality. Hey, let's go with functionality. So I'm going to put the motion sensor over here so it's pointed away from me so I'm not triggering it. I will probably also put some black wire loom around this so again so it's black and can be hidden so these you know yellow red colors don't stand out so here we go we're going to turn this on it's probably might it might make some noise and then it'll settle down what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this potentiometer set in the middle so when we turn this on after it settles down it should cycle for every 15 seconds Right now, another 15 seconds, it should round about. Continuous run. It's going to keep the last setting, so it's going to be going to have to wait for 15 seconds, and then this unit should continuously run. Okay, I just moved that all the way over. It may cycle one more time under 15 seconds because sometimes, like I said, keeps the last settings. But now we're running on the motion sensor. Now, I don't think many people would keep this on continuous run. Uh, the, as I stated in the beginning of this video, the reason we're doing this is somebody on the Halloween Facebook page that I belong to wanted something like this to be continuously running. I wouldn't recommend that because the motor in this thing is not the best. If you continuously ran this thing, I'm pretty sure you would burn that motor out after a while. I would think with the, he never thought of a motion detection. He was just trying to keep it continuously running. I think most people would probably use this with the motion detection. All right, we got the motion detector right here. The sensor's going out this way. Now in theory, when I wave my hand in front of it, it should work. And there you go. We'll do it one more time. Okay. Now the reason why I turned it off and activated is because I was taking the power away from it. So that made the sense wire at a zero value which it activated so now it's turned off though nothing will activate it so i wanted to go over this is infrared sensor this particular one i used was fairly inexpensive does the trick as you saw and there are two potentiometers on this as well and what one does is this is the sensitivity how far away can something be detected it can be as close as i think two feet and as far out as six feet uh, depending on that, I have that really set in the middle. And the other is sensitivity, or I'm not sorry, that's the sensitivity, how far out it is. The other one is a delay, which means after it triggers, how long before you can trigger it again. Uh, right now I have it set in the middle, but it really doesn't matter because this thing cycles for about uh, eight seconds, eight and a half seconds. So by the time this gets done cycling through and figuring out what to do next, the, the delay is long out of play with this so you can pretty much set that anywhere you want so that's it so now we're going to take this out and i'm going to show you what it looks like when it set up a little little demo and see how it goes you couldn't ask for a better setup this is a work table we have out here in the garage at the shop at the cave 
And what a better place to put this chainsaw amongst all this stuff. Now, right now it's set in motion sensing mode. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into frame. Um, I don't know how soon the motion is gonna kick on, but it should pick me up as I walk by here as a normal person coming down on Halloween. to pick me up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come behind the camera this time and see just how far out it really picks somebody up. So here I am approaching. I'm about behind the camera. Okay, and I'm about... Let me get out of frame so it doesn't... So I was about 12 feet away when I, that activated. So this would be perfect for outside during one of your Halloween props. Um, I wouldn't want to leave this out in bad weather. But uh, certainly on Halloween night, if the weather is good and it's not, you know, a torrential downpour, this would be great to set up for there. Uh, or even during the evenings, if you got people walking by. And like I said, I just this is not waterproof. Uh, the original product was not to be made outside, and I certainly didn't waterproof it in our mods. But all in all, I think this works terrific. I mean, we've seen it work on intervals. We've seen it work uh, continuous. And like I said, the motion activated mode is, is my favorite. This is just great. We'll just do it one more time because it just tickles me. Now you can see how sensitive it is. I was just barely in its view and it picked me up. So one of the things you might want to do is you, when you get it, or if you do this, is you may want to dial down the sensitivity so it works only very close to it. So you don't get moving cars or uh, blowing leaves or anything like that to activate it. So this is a great successful test. Let's go back into the, uh, into the cave and we'll summarize. Okay, so I know I went over that really quick how we modified this. I didn't go into too much detail. Um, if you know how to use an Arduino board, you're going to know pretty much basically how I did it. If you've never used an Arduino before, it, you know, just write me and I'll, I'll help you along as best as I can. I'm going to have some schematics up here. I'm going to have the wiring diagram up here. I'll have the parts list on where we got everything. Uh, but this is really great. Um, and I enjoy making these props because where I'm living now is not uh, we don't we're, there's not a lot to do with halloween there's not a, a lot of people coming so we don't set up our big display like we used to so i really love making these props for other people and you know and showing them how they can do them themselves i probably have no use for this i'll probably find somebody who wants this uh, it'll probably be up on the site for sale but i hope doing this really got some people's appetites whetted for, for doing their own props. The Adreno board is really simple. Even the programming is really simple. The commands are real simple. And I'm always here to help you over here at the Maker's Cave. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it got you excited to do this over yourself. Um, if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button below. If you want to see more of our videos, because we got plenty more props, I'm going to try and do a, couple, a prop a week. Uh, hit subscribe and then hit the bell too so you know be notified when they come out so until our next project i'm steve thanks for stopping by the maker's cave and i'll catch you next time